Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer. Welcome to Wasteland Talks, my weekly talk show where I talk about whatever the hell I want. And this week is another edition of one of my newer segments, which is What If? And I have my friend Mike here, who's going to be helping me remake The Wiz. What if The Wiz came out today? Mike, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you for having me. If I was a little bit more prepared, I'd have grabbed my copy of the movie and its soundtrack and waved them in front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, mine's like up there, so I'm not going to go grab it. Yeah, uh, I've got the movie, the soundtrack to the movie, and the soundtrack to the original play. Very nice. Somewhere. somewhere. And the main reason why I wanted to ask you on for this idea was because the last time I watched this was actually with you. Yeah. <laughs> you, Dave and Ryan, and for one of our movie nights. And, you know, it's very interesting because I feel like this kind of idea happens a lot now where it's like, well, let's take an older property, shake things up from different perspectives. And like this happened in the 70s. Where it's like, what if we made Wizard of Oz, except in the era of black exploitation, make it a whole cast of black actors and performers, and be interesting to see who we have and some ideas who we would put in it if it was made today. Now, Mike, I'll let yeah. you get started. So, in terms of director, who do you have in mind for pulling this whole thing together? Well. I, at first, I was like, I don't know anything about directors. Ah! But I was like, no, you know what? I know of at least one good black director. And I went for Ryan Coogler. Because nice. I figure for, for how good he did with the, at least the first Black Panther movie, he could probably handle doing a remake of The Wiz. Because it would be, if anything, a little bit more respectful to black people than the last movie was. <laughs> yeah, the play, because you know... The play did by... not. The play didn't make the joke about the taxis. That I'm was a movie like, thing. <laughs> the Wiz, directed by Sidney Lumet, very famous, not black, very old white guy. So there you go. Yeah. So actually, I really like that pick, and you know what? Obviously, he's a very talented director. He's been able to do a variety of different projects. And honestly, if Disney can entrust Aladdin to somebody like Guy Ritchie, who's never done a musical before, why not let Ryan Coogler do it? So, and I think he definitely has the talent to try to pull something off like this. Now, yeah. in terms of some of the cast, obviously, you know, the key piece to this is Dorothy, right? Right. Who's our lead. So who do you have in mind for Dorothy? So... The direction I went in for some of the uh, the people, like for Dorothy, first thing I had in mind was I think it would be interesting if, like, if I were remaking The Wiz, if all three actresses who have played Dorothy before were in the movie. From the original play, the original movie, and the NBC show from 2015. Nice. And be because of some of the changes to The Wiz that the NBC show made, I had a lot of the people be who they were in the stage play. So I chose Shanice Williams, who played Dorothy in the NBC show. Very nice. So, because one of the interesting things I feel like they did with, like, the Wiz versus, like, the regular Wizard of Oz is Dorothy's supposed to be a little girl. And yeah. it's a odd well, you know, they had Judy well, Garland play Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz dressed up as a little girl, and you're just like, that's only slightly weird. <laughs> the but, I found out while I was doing my research that the reason in the 1978 movie that Dorothy was a school teacher was because Diana Ross basically went to Universal and was like, I want to be Dorothy, and they won't let me. Universal went, if you don't let it be her, we won't fund your movie. I'm like, but she's too old. We just wanted to bring Stephanie Mills back. Well, I want to do it. So Diana Ross was aged up to be a school teacher. Which that's an interesting choice to like age Dorothy up to an adult. Um, I I did contemplate that when I was doing my casting, and I kind of had like, if she was younger, who would be? If you're still sticking with an adult, who would be? 
Um, but I appreciate you uh, keeping to some of the previous performers and being having them involved. Now, obviously, Dorothy has her friends. We have the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion. So how, who did you have in mind for them? So for a different reason, I chose the same people from the NBC show. The reason I chose the same people is because two out of three of them wrote a new song for the stage play for NBC. And I was like, that has to be in the movie, but I can't put that in the movie and then not bring them back as the people who <laughs> sang it. So for the Tin Man, it would be Neo, whatever his real name is. I don't know why I didn't look that up. I just wrote Neo and went with it. I'm sure that um, is Christian. I got a logic. <laughs> Elijah Kelly for the Scarecrow who is Elijah Kelly it turns out actually was the musician for the NBC production of The Wiz hmm. so that's I, that's not who I chose to be my musician but I put him in it because he wrote the song okay and the, the Cowardly Lion I put David, David Allen Greer because he was the lion in the, the stage play but I think his performance of Mean Old Lion could use a little work I, I was not a really a big of, fan of how he pulled off that song. I am a big fan of but David also Allen I noticed Greer, that, but I haven't seen the um, NBC show, so. I've listened to the soundtrack a lot because one day Spotify just went, but wow, here's a song from it. And I just listened to the whole thing and it was great. But there you go. I've noticed that for the Cowardly Lion across all the productions, they always seem to hire a guy that's somewhere between 57 and 67. I'm not sure why that is, but all of them have done that. Interesting. And look, I don't know. I don't know enough about actors to go looking for an actor that age. And God forbid, I was like, "Hey, you know who'd be a good cowardly lion? Denzel Washington." No. I would I love that. I would, I would hundred percent pay to see that. I don't I, know if he can sing though. I, it's not like I can ask him. I <laughs> I just want to see like the cowardly lion walk up and be like. And go full Denzel on somebody. <laughs> like, you know what, Dorothy? I am a mean old lion. Let's go kick this witch's ass. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, Denzel from Fences just being like, nobody said I had to love you. <laughs> it's like, nobody said I had to like you. You're my son. And your responsibility. I'm like, I wouldn't want to mess with him. And then I watch James Earl Jones do fences. I'm just like, I would want to mess with him even less. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> my first time hearing that quote was James Earl Jones doing it. It's like, ooh, I feel like I'm in trouble. Dang. <laughs> right through the YouTube video. <laughs> so, so doing some uh, more honoring to the, the Wiz live show. I feel like two more of like obviously like the big characters is you have Glinda and you have Eveline. So who do you have in mind for our good and bad witch? So for Glinda, um I I chose Stephanie Mills because she was the original Dorothy in the stage play and Diana Ross screwed her out of being Dorothy in the movie. But this uh NBC production had Stephanie Mills play Anthony M. Okay. So I th I thought, okay, she's been Dorothy, she's been Auntie M, she should also be the main heroine of the end of the movie who helps Dorothy, so I think she should get the trifecta and get to be Glinda as well. That's pretty cool. Now for Eveline, I... <laughs> so, when I was trying to find actors who could be Eveline and Dorothy, and Dorothy was like, okay, I don't really know anything about Black actors, I'm, and I know that if Hollywood did try to make this movie, they would probably probably try to get Zendaya to do it. Yep. I'm kind of I'm kind of sick of Zendaya's name. She seems she's really chill, but I'm sick of seeing her name everywhere. And I also don't know if she'd want to do it, but she can definitely sing as by like the greatest showman. But I thought it would be hilarious to have Eveline I have to I have to give my my background. Sorry. I have there's a reason I did this. I didn't okay. in the stage show they had Queen Latifah play the Wiz. And so okay. I figure if the stage play can gender swap the Wiz, I can gender swap <laughs> Eveline. And so if I were going to gender swap Eveline, it would be Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> you know what? He'd have a lot of fun with it. So, you yeah, know what? We, I'm down we for know, it. 
<laughs> we know he can sing, and I've seen someone perform that in drag before, and they did a really good job. So I was like, okay, it can be done. It can definitely be done. But my actual response, because I don't think that current Dwayne Johnson would be okay with being the person who gets melted by water at the end. No, although rock, although rock types are weak to water, but uh-huh. uh, <laughs> for Eveline, I went with Mary J. Blige because even though I'm not a huge fan of Mary J. Blige, she also did a really good job as Eveline in that play. It sounded like the movie. Mm-hmm. That's just how good it was. And I'm like, I can't really think of anybody else I would have do it because any of the other actresses that I thought of, I don't know whether or not they can sing. Fair. And and also, they've been in so many things lately. I think people would probably turn a blind eye to the movie just because their name is on it. Like Leslie Jones or uh, the other lady whose name I forget, but I didn't even write it down because it's just not that important. Fair. But Mary J. Blige did such a good job in the play that I also was like, rather than trying to just grab black people that I don't even know if they can sing, might as well pick the person who's already a musician there and has go. already done it. I wish she would be willing to do it again. I do have to say, just thinking about Dwayne Johnson, um, he takes on the project, and Eveline is actually the co protagonist of the movie. And the power dynamic of the Wiz universe is about to change. <laughs> like, I in my original notes before when I misunderstood the project, when I, when I misunderstood the assignment, <laughs> I considered the, the fact that. In a world where Wicked already exists, would Eveline a- actually need to be bad? Well, that well, you know what? That is an interesting thing, and you could still play on that because you know, wouldn't stop anybody from changing something in a remake. Um, but like, it that does pose an interesting point because I feel like what's probably the most culturally relevant version of the story right now is probably Wicked. Yeah, and most people would probably see it that way. So that would be interesting. I also had considered the fact that there's we we only ever hear of the good witch of the south, the evil witch of the east that got smushed, and then the wicked witch of the west, and nobody ever talks about the other fourth witch. Or I I mean, this play gave the fourth witch is uh, at a pearl, but we haven't gotten to that yet. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking it would be interesting, like with the consideration of a version of the wicked witch who's not actually the villain and was forced into it and then you put it over the whiz who named their witch evil lean and she runs a, a sweatshop so <laughs> but also the it's fact that it's like propaganda oh, wicked's like oh the people hate her because she's green and this is the the wizard of oz if it was all black people maybe we don't want to touch that <laughs> <laughs> oh you know, somebody somewhere remaking The Wizard of Oz would just, like, the only person they would race swap would be the Wicked Witch. It'd be like, see, that's a bad take. <laughs> if I wanted to remake The Wizard of Oz and not The Wiz and just bother people, just have the Wicked Witch of the West be an orc and play it straight. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, they had to be green somehow, right? Now, who do you have in mind for the Wiz? The instant you you name dropped me Wayne Brady, it couldn't be anybody else. <laughs> there you go. He's been my Wiz the it's ever since you reminded me he exists, he's been my Wiz. There you go. <laughs> um a spoiler alert, Wayne Brady's gonna be talked about again later. <laughs> um but you know <laughs> Wayne Brady ever since so like you know, Wayne Brady started on, like, big with, like, whose line is it anyway? But yeah. then, you know, like, the Chappelle show <laughs> and this whole entire skit of, like, is Wayne Brady gonna have to choke a bitch? And <laughs> completely changed. But especially recently with him on Cuphead and, like, I he's, like, my favorite character in that show. Was he King Dice or somebody else? Yeah. I... The reason I think Wayne Brady would be good as the Wiz is for one, we need someone who can sing. Yes. Because the Wiz has two good songs and Richard Pryor can sing and they didn't even let him do it. 
Like, why did you pick a comedian? Like, yes, I know why they picked Richard Pryor. It was 1978. Of course they picked Richard Pryor. Yeah. Same reason they picked same reason they picked Michael Jackson. But yep. he could have he could have done the songs. They didn't let him do it. Shame. But I know Wayne Brady, not only could Wayne Brady do the songs, I would also want him to bring his improv into it. That would be great. Oh, that reminds me. I had a, a another thing that I would have done differently for the sca- the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Lion. Uh-huh. If all three of them happened to be musicians, I was going to have them rework all their songs to their musical styles. Interesting. Because I... the the 2015 production, the music was like a more hip hoppy style, but rather than having the entire production be hip hoppy. I would just want their songs to be what their musical styles already were. I have a bit of that in mind, which I'll talk about once we get there, in terms of who I had in mind for at least one of them. I thought it would be interesting. Now, did you have any other casting pieces that you uh, threw some names around for? Well... In the uh, the Wiz movie, they called the Good Witch of the North Miss One. But in every other version, her name is Ada Pearl. In the stage play, she was played by Amber Riley. And I really like how her version of the song was. Every time I hear that, that's one of my get up and dance in the morning songs if I'm mm-hmm. feeling upset and haven't seen the sun yet. That but is... I also thought it would be interesting to have Diana Ross's daughter play uh, the other uh, Good Witch. Tracy Ross, I don't remember the middle of her name. And for Auntie M, I I went with Diana Ross to finish off that trifecta of all three Dorothys. Which my dad said that Diana Ross wouldn't do it because she doesn't want to be seen as old. And I'm like, nobody's going to... You not wanting to be seen as old doesn't change the fact that you're in your 80s. Calm down. (laughs) Yeah. It's okay. You're there. (laughs) Besides, it's her... It's her fault we have the precedence for Auntie M needing to be old anyway. So she did it to herself. Absolutely. Because if Dorothy wasn't if Dorothy wasn't in her mid twenties, the Auntie M would be in her mid twenties. Because Dorothy's supposed to be like fifteen, maybe. But Diana Ross messed that up. Also And also oops, sorry. I was about to say I was today years old when I found out that Tracy Ellis Ross is Diana Ross's daughter. <laughs> so <laughs> I did not know that. And you know what? That kind of makes some sense. So. They both got them big gold eyes. Well, and because Tracy Ellis Ross, this was sometime at the beginning of COVID or 2019. She was in a film where she was a a famous singer. And I'm like, see, now that makes so much more sense. Yeah. But I, I um. I also had uh, some notes about musicians and also the crows. Okay. Or if the, was the musicians a, a separate segment? No, go right ahead. Okay. So for the musicians, there's a thing in the 78 movie where Quincy Jones did the soundtrack for that. Yeah. And there's a piano segment during the, um, the Emerald City sequence that they weren't going to include in the movie because no one was good enough to play it. So he played it himself on the giant piano. And I'm like, I know he's pushing 90 years old, but if he was willing to come back for it, that needs to be in it. It's and like then they also... Keep, they think he keep getting John Williams to come out of retirement <laughs> to keep doing <laughs> Star Wars projects. Hopefully we can get Quincy Jones for this. He did say after Indiana Jones, like, alright, I'm done. Leave me alone. He's, he's fully retiring now that Indiana Jones has happened. Okay. But, um... When looking for other musicians, there's also, like I said, Elijah Kelly would need to be a part of it for the song that they helped write for the the NBC production. But also, Hmm. I may also be sick of Lin Manuel Miranda's existence. (laughs) But I also think everywhere. I also think he would do. I also think he would do good on the soundtrack for this movie. If Quincy Jones wouldn't want to do the piano, if if Lin Manuel Miranda can play piano, I think he could probably do it. And if nothing else, he could maybe play the guy at the door who's like, nobody sees the wizard, not nobody, not know how. <laughs> there you go. Since it sounds like his acting career started in bit parts like that. So mm-hmm. for the crows, my first thing for the crows was I wanted the crows to be comedians. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I wanted the crows, the the whole basis of their lines was instead of instead of them being just barely not the crows from Dumbo, because it's 2023, ain't gonna be no we'd be done seeing about everything. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> none of that. None of that. <laughs> and none of them named Jim, God forbid. But when looking for uh comedians, I thought it would be good to have the comedians just write jokes. Their their stage direction would basically be, I want you to write jokes. No F-bombs. You can say shit maybe once. But you guys need to write jokes that just tear the scarecrow to shreds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I went looking for comedians to do it, I had the further idea of having the crows be uh, actors who've worked on Saturday Night Live together. Okay. So... I chose Tracy Morgan, Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, and Damon Wayans. Nice. And so they would just be writing jokes, tearing, tearing Elijah Kelly apart. <laughs> I don't know fun. whether or not. I'm not sure that Eddie Murphy would be willing to be in the Wiz because every picture I saw of him when I looked him up, he just looked like he was like a. Yeah, I was donkey, but if you ever ask me to do anything else on that level at my age now, I'll stab you. Well, he's definitely so gonna like, be donkey again. Uh yeah. <laughs> the, they're I, dumping I that going donkey again. <laughs> Shrek five's that Shrek money. Yeah, that Shrek yeah. money's coming. <laughs> and well, nobody's could, saying no to that Shrek Tracy, money. <laughs> I could see Tracy Morgan and Damon Wayne's doing it just for being able to write jokes like that. Yeah. And Chris Rock. After the da, 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 afro, he has no right to say no, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Although, despite the fact that I was trying really hard to have everybody still be black people, were he still with us, Gilbert Godfrey would be one of the crows. You know, when you said comedians, the first person that popped in my head to really, like, cut into somebody was Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to do that because it would it would upset way way too many trans people. So many people. Cuz when uh, he had his special and he did a whole segment about a trans person he knew my dad told me the story. I didn't see it myself. The way my dad explained it to me sounds like it was taken out of proportion, but, but I also already don't like Dave Chappelle, so <laughs> That's fair. But I do like the idea of having a bunch of comedians come in. Um, I would love two of them to just be Key and Peel. I <laughs> okay, so Peel is the one who's been doing all the horror movies, and Key is the one that was just Toad, right? Yes. Okay, so I've I'm almost not a fan of Key. He didn't do anything to me. I think I've liked everything I've seen him in, so I'm honestly not sure why I don't like him. Mm -hmm. And for Peel, it's like, I've not seen any of your horror movies because all your horror movies seem to stem on the, let's have the main characters of the horror movies be black people and they don't die, but terrible stuff happens. And I'm like, I'm just black enough for terrible stuff to happen to me regardless. I don't think I need to see it with a theremin in the background. <laughs> so I've not seen any of his movies. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, because the last thing they did to get, well, they did Wendell and Wild together, that stop motion animated film on Netflix. But then them right. as Ducky and Bunny from Toy Story Four. I'm just they were also, they did also do the epic rap battles of history. Of the first one was Martin Luther King versus Gandhi, and the second one was um, Muhammad Ali versus Michael Jordan. So nice. they both they they were both together in those. I I think they would be a fun time, and I know uh, like Key is in the new Wonka movie that's coming out in December, and I've seen him sing before, and I'm like, okay, it's fine. Uh, he could do it. Um, yeah. But now thinking about some of the shifting gears, so. I ripped so you know I was very tempted to pick uh Lynn Manuel Miranda to direct this. <laughs> um, but then I'm like, I do feel like this needs to have a black director. And I picked Nia DaCosta, and she did a small independent film, and then she did the new Candyman film. 
which I think I enjoyed a lot more than a lot of other people. And she's also going to be the director of the Marvels that's coming out in November. And from what I understand, there are musical numbers in it because apparently there's a planet where people sing and everything. And I'm like, I haven't seen the film yet, but I, I do like her work so far. And I think this would be an interesting opportunity uh, for her to direct this. And it gave me an excuse not to just pick Lim Mae Miranda to direct this film or um, John Chu, who's been, who's the one who's doing wicked and who did in the Heights and everything. So my two thoughts with Dorothy, if you keep Dorothy young, I was thinking Haley Bailey, especially after Little Mermaid, because boy, could she sing. I have thoughts about her, but they're not. <laughs> they feel they feel disrespectful because my entire reaction to her is, what's up with her eyes? They feel like they're further apart than eyes usually are. Like somebody was on a character creator and hit the slider too far and didn't know how to go back. So are you putting her in Amanda Seafried like territory where it's like you just it can't unsee her eyes? I've not seen her face recently enough to know what it looks like. When well, I let's when just I say tried Ted to made a whole entire recurring joke about calling her Gollum. Whenever <laughs> I think of Amanda Seafried, all I can imagine is just Basically, white person with no face with ponytail and a red headband. Interesting. I cannot remember her face. I can just imagine her with her hair and a ponytail and a red headband. So, Haley Bailey was like, if I'm keeping Dorothy younger. But, obviously, since the Wiz film, that wasn't the case because Diana Ross. Yeah. I did kind of like the idea of Janelle Monet. I'm a huge fan of hers. I really like her music, and she has she's a really talented actress too. Uh, she deserves some more love for uh, Glass Onion that came out last year. But I thought she'd be an interesting choice if you're going to keep Dorothy older, similar to the movie. Yeah. She also deserves to be in some happier movies. True, <laughs> that is very fair. Um, my choices, so my choice for Scarecrow was Donald Glover. And that's where I'm thinking, like, he would bring in his own kind of musical background into it. And it goes <laughs> straight rapping. I thought of the other Donald Glover and was like, what? <laughs> oh, I was thinking of the older one, and I'm like, that's Danny probably Glover. not. Dan I, was, yeah, I was thinking Danny Glover. <laughs> Scarecrow just shows up. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he just pulls out a gun and just takes out the crow. <laughs> <laughs> and what would be interesting is like if he had like a wrap off, I guess, with the crows, depending on who they are, that would be interesting. But I just like Donald Glover's energy. And it's interesting because like I know him originally from community. And I absolutely loved him in that. Um, my tin man is Wayne Brady. Uh, so that's who I thought of, uh, who Wayne Brady would be for me. And, you know, he's just fantastic. So I think he'd be fun in basically any of these roles. So I think if Wayne Brady played the tin man, anything like the way that he was played in the 78 movie, I can absolutely see him just on the ground going, teen it, teen it, <laughs> Um, For my lion, I went with Titus Burgess from Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And um, he was in the most recent season of uh, Schmigadoon. He's obviously a singer, and I just feel like he would have that great nervous energy about being the lion and i think it'd be funny having such a high-pitched like singing voice coming out of the cowardly lion i think that would be a fun time i just remembered i was like should i try to cast toto I'm like i don't know any dogs like that but you know what'd be funny is casting toto as a different dog <laughs> like a different kind of dog Instead of it being the little itty bitty gray floofy dog, they always seem to it's, find one of every 40 years. They get a new fee and it just like looks like a bear. 
walking across the movie. <laughs> I was imagining like Israel, like, come here, Toto, fucking gold retriever. <laughs> We're like a Great Dane. It's taller than Dorothy. <laughs> Just a really ridiculous dog. That's not what you expect. Like. Even better if they spend as much of the movie as possible never having Toto be in frame. And when he finally shows up to go bite the cowardly lion, he's just like a mess. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun time. <laughs> if anybody out there is going to remake the Wiz, don't steal Mike's ideas. <laughs> um, for uh, Glinda, I had Jennifer Hudson. Because, like, you can't really go wrong with Jennifer Hudson in terms of singing. Oh, and yeah. Evelyn, I put Queen Latifah. And here's the thing. I had no idea she was in the live show on NBC. So that was completely coincidental. Um, you need to listen to her two songs after this. Okay. Because I, like, the reason I picked her was because of Chicago. Because I really liked her in Chicago. And I thought she would play a good villain here. And my whiz is Eddie Murphy. I haven't seen Chicago, but I've listened to the soundtrack so much that it feels like I've seen Chicago. Mm -hmm. Like, just looking at the pictures in the booklet and hearing the songs, I feel like I've seen that movie and I understand. Yep. And then... Eddie Murphy! I know he can sing because of the party all the time. I'm not sure if he's got the singing voice for the songs that the whiz has, though. That's fair. Um, because the thing Unless is, I've only seen the film, so like you said, they didn't let Richard Pryor sing. So, and and less than the last forty years, Eddie Murphy's singing voice hit puberty. Then maybe, but like, I'm just you know I'm just imagining him singing like Disco Inferno from sh- like the Shrek, like karaoke stuff. Or I love him in Dream Girls. He is so great in Dream Girls. And I wish that he won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for Dream Girls, but then Norbit ruined it. Yeah. Norbit came out and everybody's like, maybe not. And just like, how dare you? Now I want to listen to the Shrek 2 uh, Living the Vida Loca. Oh, <laughs> love it. See, if, if if we wind up doing another what if, what if uh, Latin, like a uh, uh, Latin Wizard of Oz. I'm totally casting Antonio Banderas in there somewhere. Yeah, and then the Manuel Miranda can direct it. I feel like Antonio Banderas could be like the Tin Man, just because of how interesting it would be to see the Tin Man sword fighting. <laughs> because he is supposed to have the axe. Yeah. Just have Antonio Banderas fighting somebody with the axe, like when the flying monkeys show up. He's just like, come if you dare. And he just has his axe out like a sword. <laughs> I I I just remembered I had an idea for the flying monkeys, but I didn't write it down because the crows threw me off. I I have the idea of having the flying monkeys all be Kevin Hart. <laughs> That's great. But Let's also, make it I, was like, happen. <laughs> I was like, if I put Kevin Hart in the movie, then I think I probably could get The Rock to be Evelyn because then The Rock would be the one dispatching all of the Kevin Harts. Oh, <laughs> uh, it'd be the most watched clip from the movie. It'd blow <laughs> up on the internet. <laughs> oh, that would that would be great. Uh we had some fun ideas for this. This was a fun time, Mike. <laughs> uh now people just need to make it. Yeah. Come on, people. Probably not right now though, not with Hollywood. Like, how how can we get the writers to come back? I know. We'll offer them the exact same terrible deal and see if they say yes. Well, you know, they just pushed back Dune. So things aren't looking very positive right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now I gotta w- <laughs> now I gotta wait five more months for my Lord and Savior Timothy Chalamet to come <laughs> in <laughs> white savior rackets. <laughs> it's weird to me that both versions of the Dune, like the film adaptations of Dune, 
both got a 25 year old actor to play Paul Atreides when in the books it's one of the many books where his age is a plot point so I'm like I'm getting real tired of y'all doing that but I recognize that the stuff that happens in Dune you wouldn't really want to have a child actor doing the things that happen in Dune well but, at least well up until recently Timothy Chalamet looked like he could have been a teenager I think he's the funniest hit puberty, thing about man. it it's like they had him be 25 year old actors playing Paul Atreides in the first Dune when his character doesn't even hit 25 until like the third one. Well, and Kyle McLaughlin looked like he was 40. So. <laughs> Credit where it's due, though. He looks like he was 40 and then just stayed there for the next 40 years. There you go. Uh, they should have got Tom Holland. At least he'd look like he'd be a teenager. I don't know if I would want to put Tom Holland through the Dune series. No, nah, he's already had enough. It's not, it's not that. It's not like him having done enough stuff. I just I don't think I would wish Paul Atreides on Tom Holland. It's one of those kinds of things where it's like, are there any other act white actors today that aren't Tom Holland and Timothy Chalamet? To well, give... don't forget Chris Pratt. Let me reframe that. Characters <laughs> that are under the age of 35 all go to the two of them. And then for some goddamn reason, they're just like, older than that? Chris Pratt! Like, did you see they're they're thinking of doing a Jack and Daxter movie and they're going to have it be Chris Pratt and Tom Holland? Tom Holland, yep. It's like, but, wh- but why though? Uh, the art of voice acting is so underappreciated. Yeah. And and, you know, not to go off on a tangent, but that Super Mario Brothers movie, I feel like there was, like, maybe one person who truly committed. And we all know who that is. His name is Jack Black. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, Jack Black. But <laughs> he did give give that Toad voice the old college try. Oh, my God. Ba- <laughs> Jack Black as Bowser was the most amazing thing. And if Peaches doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be so mad at my Oscar party. <laughs> All I want yeah. is them to perform that at the Oscars. You want people to watch? Get Jack Black sh- show up in his Bowser tuxedo <laughs> and sing Peaches live on the show. <laughs> and you'll get, like, 10 million more viewers. <laughs> I think the only reason I haven't seen that movie yet is because of how much crap people gave them for hiring Chris Pratt to be Mario. Like they didn't even give him a chance just to find out that the direction they went for was they're from Brooklyn, so he's doing that accent. Yeah. Instead of the woohoo, even though he did do that a couple of times. It's a me, a Mario. Woohoo! I know people like give Seth Rogen a lot of shit for only using his normal voice, but I do. From the one clip of him being Donkey Kong, I love his delivery of, now you die. See, that was the only line that I felt like was, <laughs> like, he committed to. And what's even worse is he put on a voice for Bebop in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I'm like, you could have done that too. I feel like, anyway, well, that's well, not, what this, yeah, that's I not do, what this show's about. But you did start by saying you talk about whatever the hell you want. You know what, Mike? You make an excellent point. So Seth You Rogen, all know what you signed up for. <laughs> Seth Rogen, I feel like the reason he just does the Seth Rogen voice is because most movies hire him to just be Seth Rogen. But True. the Ninja Turtles movie probably did want him to do a voice, and he was passionate about it, well, so he did. he's the one who co-wrote it. Yeah, so, like, so of course like, he's going to do a voice. If, so. yeah, of course he's going to do a voice if he cares. But it sounds yeah. like anything for Seth Rogen that's not a passion project He's just going to roll up as Seth Rogen. Whether or not he brings the weed depends on the movie. <laughs> and depending on how much they wanted him, they'll supply the weed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rogen, Cowardly Lion. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm a mean old lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. See now you got what you got there, line. <laughs> what you got there, line? Oh, it's just uh, it's just from the African savanna. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, uh, I did like him as Pumba though. Him and Billy Eichner really committed to that. <laughs> I've only seen bits and pieces of that movie because it's like that movie was a dumb idea. Yeah, you don't have but to watch it. 
I appreciate that some of the voice actors really like gave their all for it, but that was a dumb idea. You know who didn't? Beyonce. Uh, <laughs> was she Nala? Is that why she popped up on music for that movie? Because she was in it? She's been acting since Gold Member. She still hasn't figured out how to actually act yet. Now I want to watch Austin Powers. But anyway. <laughs> well, just, just the first two, though. Just the first two. Uh, I had some fun with Gold Member. I'm at that point where it's like, I really enjoyed the Austin Powers movies as a kid, but now I'm about to be 32 and I don't, I feel like I should never watch them again. Well, that goes sad. I just, I feel like if I try to watch them at this age, it's just going to hurt. That's, that's a choice you're going to have to make, Mike. It's, it's similar to like growing up watching adult cartoons as a kid and then watching all the kid ones as an adult. And it's like, wow, I understand these messages now. And then turning back to the adult ones like, y'all stupid. <laughs> it's all stupid. But Mike, thank you so much for coming on and remaking the whiz with me. <laughs> Yeah, it would it would be really cool to just have all the Dorothys come back. Like, there's a lot of the people like, man, if they were still alive, they would so be in this movie. But I, I don't usually spec into Necromancer, so just portals <laughs> start popping up, turns into the Avengers Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> just do the Doctor Strange thing to get actors to come back, and they're like, "Why am I here?" It's the multiverse of the Wiz. You're here to get back on the grind. <laughs> <laughs> But all of you out there, thank you for always tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.